Just a quick reminder before we get into the lesson to download the hands-on lab exercises that accompany this full CCNA course. I'll include the link in the description. Also, remember to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any of the lessons in the course. Okay, let's get into it. In this lecture, you'll learn about the data serialization formats, XML, JSON, and YAML. To give you the definition, data serialization is the process of converting structured data to a standardized format that allows sharing or storage of that data in a form that allows recovery of its original structure. So basically what that means is that it allows transfer of the data between different systems, applications, and programming languages because it's storing the data in a standardized format. And three of the available format types are XML, JSON, and YAML. Obviously, they have to be machine readable for the data to be shared between machines. They're also designed to be human readable as well, though, to make it easier for us to work with them. And they're plain text data encoding formats. The data formats are mostly interchangeable, meaning normally you can use any of them. It just depends what is supported on the particular system you're working on at the time. Often you'll be able to choose between multiple different data formats. For example, if you're working with Python programming, it's capable of reading and writing with all three of those formats. So the one to use depends on the support and the system it's being used with and which one is easiest for you. I'll talk about which ones are easier than the others as we go through this lecture. So starting off with JSON, we'll start here because this is the one that you're most likely to be tested on in the CCNA exam. One of the requirements is that you're able to read JSON formatting. So JSON, it stands for JavaScript Object Notation. This was first standardized in 2013. And it's easier for humans to read and work with than XML. XML has been around for a longer time than JSON, and one of the reasons for JSON being developed was to have an easier format to read. JSON can be imported directly into JavaScript, which is commonly used on the internet. And with JSON, white space in the text has got no special meaning. RESTful APIs often use JSON. We'll be talking about RESTful APIs later in this section. So the different data types in JSON. So I'm going to break down the syntax and the format of how JSON works now. And first off, I need to tell you what the different data types are. I'll be explaining each of these as we go through the following slides. So the different data types are object, array, string, number, boolean, and null. So let's start off with object. An object is an unordered collection of key value pairs which describe the thing, whatever the object is. When the object is written in JSON format, it is surrounded by curly braces. So we've got the key value pairs which describe the object. The keys must be strings, meaning a set of characters and the values must be a valid JSON data type. You saw those earlier, but it's the six types of string, number, object, array, boolean, or null. The keys and values are separated by a colon when they're written, and each key value pair is separated by a comma until we get to the last one there. So having a look at an example here, you can see we've got our JSON object. We can tell that because it opens and closes with curly brackets. And then in here, we've got that unordered collection of key value pairs, which describe it. So we're looking at the description for an interface here. You can see here is the key, is the name, and then the value is gigabit ethernet one. And then we've got the next key, which is description and the value internet link. 
and then we've got the key enabled and the value of true. So you can see there we've got three key value pairs. We've got the key first, then the value, and they're separated by a colon. Okay, moving on. The next one is array. And where an object is an unordered list, an array is an ordered list of values. And where an object is surrounded by curly brackets, the array is surrounded by square brackets. So that's how you can tell them apart. With our arrays, values must be a valid JSON data type. Again, string, number, object, array, boolean, or null. So you can see here that the value for an array could be another array, or it could be an object. And going back a slide, it's the same for our objects. That can include an object or an array as well. So we can nest our values. We can have objects within objects. We can have arrays within arrays, and we can have them within each other as well. You'll see some examples of the nesting as I go through this lecture. So an example of an array, in fact, you can see here that we are nesting an array inside an object. We've got the object here. We can see that from the curly brackets. On the object, we've got the key values there of the name is John and his age is 25. And then we've got the key value where the key is girlfriends and the value is an array. And we can see the array there, which is opened and closed with the square brackets. And we've got the list there of John's girlfriends are Zoe, Eve and Amy. And you can see here on our object that each of the key value pairs there, we've got a comma after each one apart from the last one. And it's the same in the array as well, where they are separated by commas, but we don't have a comma after the last one there. Okay, and more example of nesting here. You can see here that we've got an object. So we're opening and then closing the object. And then in there, we have got an array. And in the array, we've got two objects nested in the array. We've got our first IP address and subnet mask, and then our second IP address and subnet mask. Okay, moving on. So the other JSON data types, apart from object and array, are a string. So a string is an alphanumeric string of characters. And with our strings, they are always shown enclosed in quotes. So the key is always a string. So that's why the key is always within quotes. And then we've got the colon to separate from the value. And then you can see this is a string. We can tell it's a string because that is in quotes as well. The next data type is a number. So here, the example here, the key is input errors. And then the value there is three. When we're specifying a data type which is not a string, we don't put it in quotes. So we can see here it's not in quotes and it's a number, so the data type is number. Boolean is either going to be true or false. So here we're describing the state of the interface in this example. Is it enabled or not? That's a Boolean value. Either it's true or false on whether the interface is enabled. And finally, we can have a null value as well. Null can be written explicitly as null, or you could just have a blank value there. It depends on the particular application you're working with at the time. If for a null value, you should say null or leave it blank. Okay, so that is the format of JSON. I've just got another final example here as well. And this gives you an example of where it would be used for network programmability, where we have got the object opened at the top and then closed down at the bottom here. And then we've got multiple objects and arrays inside there describing our interfaces. So we've got two different interfaces. So that's why we've got an array opened here and then closed down here for our different interfaces. We've got an object inside the array. The first object is interface gigabit ethernet one. And we've also got interface gigabit ethernet two as well. We've also got nested arrays for the IP addresses in there. So you can see here, we've got nested arrays because you can have multiple interfaces on the device. And you can also have multiple IP addresses on the interfaces as well. And this is how it would be written in JSON format. If you wanted to have a description of your two 
interfaces on your device and the IP addresses on there. Okay, so that was the syntax of the JSON data format. Moving on, the next one is XML. XML was standardized in 1998. It's been around a lot longer than JSON. It's widely used across the internet and similar with HTML. So XML was designed to describe and transfer data while, while HTML is focused on how to display the data with your web pages on the internet. White space has no special meaning in XML, the same as it is in JSON. And again, we've got our lists here of our key value pairs and that they are contained within object tags. So you can see an example of a tag here and we open it with the word inside our arrows here and then to close it, we repeat the word again, but we put a slash in front of it. So let's have a look at an example of XML. Same kind of information that we were looking at earlier about our interfaces. So earlier on, you saw how similar information here would be written in JSON. This is how we would write it in XML. So you can see here, we've got our gigabit ethernet one interface. And to open that tag, we've got name inside our arrows. And then to close it, we say name again as well, again inside our arrows. And we put a slash there in front of the name. We do the same thing for internet link. We've got opening and closing the description, opening and closing the is true, etc. So that is the XML format. It's been around for a long time. There's very wide support for it. But it's not quite as easy to work with and read as JSON is. So developers will typically prefer to use JSON over XML if it is available to use that with whatever they're working on. Okay, the last one is YAML, and this stands for YAML ain't markup language. A bit of geek humor for you there. YAML is often used in Python, Perl, and Ansible. Again, like JSON designed to be easily read by humans, with YAML, the white space, the indentation is important. There's a big difference between YAML and XML and JSON. Anything at a common indentation level in YAML is considered to be related at that same level. With our YAML files, they always start with three dashes. That is how it indicates that it is a YAML file. Again, it uses key value representation, the same as the other formats. And inside our YAML file, a dash indicates a list. I mentioned it's often used with Ansible. Your Ansible playbooks use YAML. We'll be having a look at how Ansible works in a lot more detail later on, and you'll see YAML being used then. For now, here is an example of the YAML syntax and format. So you can see it starts with the three dashes, and then we've got, again, similar information we're looking at here. We've got IETF interfaces interface, and then we've got our key value pairs, which again are, se are separated by a colon, and you can see here that the name, description, enabled, and IETF, IF are all at the same level. So normally you'll use two spaces for each indentation. So I've got two spaces in front of each of these to indicate that they're at a lower level than the top level. And then when we get down to the sub information, which is the address on that interface, we've got that indented another two spaces as well. Because we can have multiple addresses on our interfaces, we've then got a list below that. And again, we've got that indented too. Okay, so that was what our data serialization is, the common formats of XML, JSON, and YAML, and how they are written. See you in the next lecture. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to get the complete course ad free right now, then you can click on the link above my head or in the description to enroll in my CCNA Gold Bootcamp. It also includes full study notes, quizzes, and 150 pages of additional troubleshooting labs you can't find anywhere else.